anyway, so uh, as good fortune would have it, um, Leslie Aquaviva, um, who I had worked with many times, she she did all the Merrill Heater shows, including the original Hollywood Squares, the original Gambit. You know, she was literally known as the best, which is why Stone Stanley grabbed her. And Stone Stanley, if you're unfamiliar with them, uh, had produced a show called Fun House, and they had uh, done, um, I don't know if they had done Shop to You Drop at that point, uh, but they brought me in. Uh, they had two ideas. Uh, one was a show called Quicksilver, and the other was a show called Free For All. Um, I got to be honest, I don't remember how Free For All worked, okay? Uh, but Because what I had to do, because again, I was known for a being a one person, a one man band. I mean, I didn't need a staff. I could write, I could produce, and I could host, which is what I did. So uh, with a little guidance from uh, Scott and David, that's Stone and Stanley, excuse me, um, I wrote up Free For All and I wrote up Quicksilver and I did them rather quickly. We pitched them. I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure I hosted them both, but I might've hosted one and had Mark host, Mark Wahlberg, I'm sorry, host the other. I don't remember. I, again, we're going back a lot of years. Um, and uh, either way, they both sold. And the better of the two shows was Quicksilver. It was a really, really good show. I, I, let me try and give you uh, an example. Um, okay, this is, this is a bad example. We would put up four four answers okay uh let's say th there were four four types of fish let's say you had salmon uh shrimp um Tuna. sea bass whatever okay and we'd ask a question like uh when this fish goes before dave it becomes a popular singing duo Salmon, Salmon Dave, okay. Um, Salmon Dave who recorded Soul Man. Uh, it's just two words. I don't have to pay for. Um, so it was though it, it was so it was questions that would try and lead you one direction and then lead you to a usually a pun. Um, I was really lucky. I had Andrew Golder writing for me and Terry McDonald who created the show writing as well. I wrote too. But I promised Scott and David it was for USA, I think. And uh, again, I don't need a writing staff. Don't need, I said, I just, I need writers, but they don't have to come into the office. So once a week, I forgot what day it would be, but Andrew and Terry would leave their questions under my door in my office. I never got to see them because they were doing other shows. Um, and I would take the material and I would write or rewrite it. And when we got to the production end of the show, uh, Bob Loudon, who I had directed many shows with, um, he was the director and we decided not to go with an audience. We split a stage, Supermarket Sweeps was on uh, hiatus. So we used the Supermarket Sweep stage, just a small part of it, because we decided not to have an audience. We would just sweeten the audience it's the only time that Stone Stanley didn't have an audience for a game show because it was a little show. Ron Maestri hosted it. And again, I just, funny, maybe. Uh, we had, we needed a giant TV screen as our center screen. So we went to um, the Federated Group or some electronic store that is out of business now. And we spent $3,500 on a TV set. Why do I know that? Because it was a deal. I said, guys, and I had just met Stone Stanley. I said, can I buy one too for the same price? Because I wanted a giant TV too. So we spent 7,000. I spent, I kicked in and so we got one TV and I had the other one here forever until it broke. Uh, it was big, it was tube TV, but it was gigantic. You know, you've never seen it. $3,500, crazy. Um, so, uh, the good news was, again, it was such a well-written show and I wish I could take credit for it but again having terry mcdonald and andrew golder on your team you can't go wrong and we did very well ron made it through um and uh 
Ron, he was a he was a good host, but uh, he did. He didn't come across as lovable. Um, you know, he was affable, but not lovable. Like, like Jim Lang, you wouldn't say is a lovable host, but he's a capable host. Whereas Bob Eubanks, you, you can see that he's lovable. Pat Finn, to me, is a lovable kind of a host. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's the way, again, when, you, when you're seeing everybody, seeing somebody every day, you know, it's kind of, you look forward to seeing Gene Rayburn. OK, um, you know, I don't know if you look forward and I'm not putting Jim Lang down at all, but I don't think you were looking forward to seeing Jim Lang on the dating game. You were looking forward to seeing the dates, um, be that as it may. Uh, so so Mark Wahlberg hosted Free For All. They were having so many problems with it. Um, it kind of fell apart and I won't talk about that show, but it. it, it yeah, anyway. I, I, 